July 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 2 Chronicles chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. Solomon, son of David, solidified his royal authority, for the Lord his God was with him and magnified him greatly. Solomon addressed all Israel, including those who commanded units of a thousand and a hundred, the judges and all the leaders of all Israel who were heads of families. Solomon and the entire assembly went to the worship center in Gibeon, for the tent where they met God was located there, which Moses, the Lord's servant, had made in the wilderness. Now David had brought up the ark of God from curious Jerem to the place he had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it in Jerusalem. But the bronze altar made by Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, was in front of the Lord's tabernacle. Solomon and the entire assembly prayed to him there. Solomon went up to the bronze altar before the Lord, which was at the meeting tent, and he offered up a thousand burnt sacrifices. That night God appeared to Solomon and said to him, Tell me what I should give you. Solomon replied to God, You demonstrated great loyalty to my father David and have made me king in his place. Now, Lord God, may your promise to my father David be realized, for you have made me king over a great nation as numerous as the dust of the earth. Now give me wisdom and discernment so I can effectively lead this nation. Otherwise, no one is able to make judicial decisions for this great nation of yours. God said to Solomon, Because you desire this and did not ask for riches, wealth, and honor, or for vengeance on your enemies, and because you did not ask for long life, but requested wisdom and discernment so you can make judicial decisions for my people over whom I have made you king, you are granted wisdom and discernment. Furthermore, I am giving you riches, wealth, and honor surpassing that of any king before or after you. Solomon left the meeting tent at the worship center in Gibeon and went to Jerusalem, where he reigned over Israel. Solomon accumulated chariots and horses. He had 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horses. He kept them in assigned cities and in Jerusalem. The king made silver and gold as plentiful in Jerusalem as stones. Cedar was as plentiful as sycamore fig trees are in the lowlands. Solomon acquired his horses from Egypt and from Kew. The king's traders purchased them from Kew. They paid 600 silver pieces for each chariot from Egypt and 150 silver pieces for each horse. They also sold chariots and horses to all the kings of the Hittites and to the kings of Syria. Solomon ordered a temple to be built to honor the Lord, as well as a royal palace for himself. Solomon had 70,000 common laborers and 80,000 stone cutters in the hills, in addition to 3,600 supervisors. Solomon sent a message to King Huram of Tyre, Help me as you did my father David, when you sent him cedar logs for the construction of his palace. Look, I am ready to build a temple to honor the Lord my God, and to dedicate it to him in order to burn fragrant incense before him to set out the bread that is regularly displayed, and to offer burnt sacrifices each morning and evening, and on Sabbaths, new moon festivals, and at other times appointed by the Lord our God. This is something Israel must do on a permanent basis. I will build a great temple for our God is greater than all gods. Of course, who can really build a temple for him, since the sky and the highest heavens cannot contain him, who am I that I should build a temple? It will really be only a place to offer sacrifices before him. Now send me a man who is skilled in working with gold, silver, bronze, and iron, as well as purple, crimson, and violet-colored fabrics, and who knows how to engrave. He will work with my skilled craftsmen here in Jerusalem and Judah, whom my father David provided. Send me cedars, evergreens, and algum trees from Lebanon, for I know your servants are adept at cutting down trees in Lebanon. My servants will work with your servants to supply me with large quantities of timber, for I am building a great magnificent temple. 
Look, I will pay your servants who cut the timber twenty thousand cores of ground wheat, twenty thousand cores of barley, a hundred and twenty thousand gallons of wine, and a hundred and twenty thousand gallons of olive oil. King Huram of Tyre sent this letter to Solomon. Because the Lord loves his people, he has made you their king. Huram also said, Worthy of praise is the Lord God of Israel, who made the sky and the earth. He has given David a wise son, who has discernment and insight, and will build a temple for the Lord, as well as a royal palace for himself. Now I am sending you Huram Abai, a skilled and capable man whose mother is a Danite and whose father is a Tyrian. He knows how to work with gold, silver, bronze, iron, stones, and wood, as well as purple, violet, white, and crimson fabrics. He knows how to do all the kinds of engraving and understands any design given to him. He will work with your skilled craftsmen and the skilled craftsmen of my Lord David your father. Now let my Lord send to his servants the wheat, barley, olive oil, and wine he has promised. We will get all the timber you need from Lebanon and bring it in raft-like bundles by sea to Joppa. You can then haul it on up to Jerusalem. Solomon took a census of all the male resident foreigners in the land of Israel after the census his father David had taken. There were 153,600 in all. He designated 70,000 as common laborers, 80,000 as stone cutters in the hills, and 3,600 as supervisors to make sure the people completed the work. God, I think about the gifts that you gave Solomon. He asked for wisdom and discernment to rule your nation. And because he asked for that, you gave him that. And you also gave him riches beyond anything imagined. But those are two blessings, intended to be blessings that you gave him. And he did use them, obviously from this passage, for your glory as blessings. But then he also took something that was a gift given by you, a blessing to be used for your kingdom, for your glorification. And he used them for bad. He definitely wasn't using his wisdom in the right way when he started acquiring foreign wives, multitudes of foreign wives. Um, and I'm sure the money part didn't hurt in helping him get a plethora of wives who then sidetracked him with other gods and other religions. And I think about the, the gifts that you bring into our lives, God. You don't bring in, us, bring in gifts to tempt us and to send us down a wrong path. You bring us gifts to use to glorify you, to use for your kingdom, to help others learn about you. And then sometimes we choose to use those blessings uh, and make them all about us. So then they become part of our ego. Look what I'm doing for God. Look at the projects he's put me in charge of. Look at the gifts he's given me. And we use them for all the wrong reasons. Or perhaps it's a situation where you have given us a blessing of being in charge. Um, a pastor, a small group leader, uh, a person who is in charge of a working group at church. And we use that power to do what you ask us to do. But then we also use that same exact talent um, to control people, maybe to do some things underhanded, um, thinking nobody will notice because we're in charge. And it completely not only dilutes your gift that you've given us, but it brings shame on the gift and the blessing you've given us. And then people watching from the outside see that something that could give you glory, uh, a path of success in business, let's say, and instead of using that for what you've given it to us, people from the outside are watching us use it for self-gratification, for um, ego, for building up our own kingdom. God, let us be mindfully aware today that all that we have, all that we have is a blessing from you. Let us look around us right now and everything in front of us we wouldn't have without you, God. The computers that we're looking at, the phones we're looking at, um, 
the car we're riding in, the desk we're sitting at. None of that would be possible without you, God. Those are all blessings. Let us remember that you give us blessings and you give us blessings to use for your kingdom, not to use to build up our own kingdom, our own palace, as Solomon went on to eventually do. In your son's name I pray, amen.